So yeah, I want to follow on from yesterday's uh, instalment of history. And I want to go back a little bit. I think I jumped a little bit too far, far forward with the Fierce Panda stuff. Not too much so, but a little bit. So one thing I wanted to, to touch on um, is based around... Well, basically, as I explained with Coalition and Rob Partridge and Tim Vigan, obviously... Uh, that's that's not the end of that story, and if he's watching, I don't know whether he probably thinks I've forgotten him, but I haven't. But so obviously, there was another person involved in the management as well, and I think the only reason I didn't mention him yesterday was more to do with the fact that um, he came into the picture a little later than than Tim and Rob did, just a little bit. So I'm talking about Tony Perrin anyway, who is one of our managers. And uh, he's also a Braces manager, and he was the manager for the mission, and all about Eve, Tony, I don't know. Uh, a really great person in the industry as well, as well as Rob Partridge, uh, in, a, in a different way. Um, Tony was, well, I'll talk about how we met Tony first of all, shall we? So again, in that two-year period of development, not only did Tim come up every now and again, but we'd also do a few gigs. One of them being at Josie's Well, I think. I think we first met Tony at Josie's Well, I think. I could be wrong on that, but not far wrong. So anyway, Tim and Rob came up for the Josie's Well gig, but they also brought Tony Perrin. Who, so that was the first time we met him. Um, and he was again, well, he is, he's a different character to, to Tim and to Rob. So it was... It was great to meet him as well to sort of build more of a picture of the the people who were actually going to, you know, um, steer our ship, so to speak. And Tony, as well as, you know, being involved in music for a very long time, he he's a brilliant businessman, an absolutely brilliant businessman. And I think that's one thing about Tim. It's certainly how I saw things. I'm not saying Tim's not a good businessman. Of course he is. But Tim was much more the voice of excitement and the voice of vibing us up in ourselves. And Tony was much more practical. And so Tony was the one who sort of sorted out all our record deals and things like that. He was just a really great business mind as well as a great mind in music, if you know what I mean. So yeah, I kind of felt... Uh, slightly guilty yesterday, but I think I jumped too far forward. That's why I didn't I didn't mention Tony. And a couple of times I said uh, Tim, Rob, and the coalition team. I'm not lumping Tony Perry in, in with the coalition team. Um, you know, in my mind, I suppose the coalition team are people like um, Tina Partridge, Rob Partridge's wife, and people like Joe Feldman, um, a really lovely woman, and people like Cy White, and. Um, Terrible with names, I can't remember everyone's names now. Steve Phillips. There were so many people there. It was I tell you what, going into because that, that was brilliant going into the coalition offices when everyone were there. That was one of the best times of being in this band. Because it was just so nice to see everyone that was so excited about your music. So yeah, the, the same gig at Josie's Well, where we, we met Tony Perry for the first time. Um I think that was the same gig that Tim also brought up Tony Wilson. So obviously, I'd, you know, everyone will know who Tony Wilson is, Factory Records. Now, very early on in our development, can't remember exactly how or why, but um, Tony Wilson was effectively restarting Factory Records. Um, and he had another chat with him called Warren. And I'm sorry, I can't remember his second name. But a really, a really lovely bloke, as was Tony Wilson. So that was mind-blowing for us, you know, doing this gig at, at Josie's Well. And not only had we met Tony Perrin, you know, going to be part of our management team, but Tony Wilson was there with the prospect of wanting to sign us. So as you can imagine, that was really exciting. So I forgot to mention as well, Tony got involved before Long before Long Road existed. Tony Tony was involved early on. He just wasn't at Bright Young Things, and it was a couple of weeks, if not months, before we met Tony. And again, if Tony is watching, I apologise if I can't recall everything correctly. Um, but certainly those three people 
were massively important to us. Rob Partridge, Tim Vigan and Tony Perrin. It's difficult, this, because I, I suddenly feel self-conscious about people who I might not be doing justice to or leaving out or things. But honestly, it, it's all just a stream of consciousness, this. You know, I've got people telling me I need to be using cue cards and all sorts of stuff. And do you know what I mean? The, the, the reason this works so well at the moment is because I can just talk to you and I don't have cue cards and stuff. And I do go off on tangents, but that's just part of who I am, I suppose. Even if I had cue cards, I'd be going off on tangents, trust me. And then I'd have to edit it out. And again, I'm not being funny, but I've got a job and stuff to do. Do you know what I mean? That like sitting down and editing stuff for ages is kind of difficult at this stage. So this is kind of the easiest way for me to do it. But so yeah, Tony Wilson being at that gig, obviously, as you can imagine, that was that was really exciting for us, and um, that was the start of lots of different people being brought up by Tim and Tony, because obviously Rob. Rob Partridge tended to stay at base more often than not. It came up originally, especially to meet our parents. Our parents really appreciated meeting him, but otherwise, Tony, um, Rob kind of stayed at base and Tim and Tony would come up together and watch us practice and all those sorts of things. So they started bringing people to these gigs that we were doing, which was, you know, that's that was another point where it was really starting to move. But I suppose, again... Even when there's people turning up to the gigs that are, you know, famous names and run record labels, it still doesn't mean that you're, you're going to get signed. Do you know what I mean? So again, it comes back to the cynicism, but, and again, it comes back to the tiny, incremental, exciting things that were happening to never overwhelm us, other faces, or... Um, Make us get too big for his boots, really. And I know this bed is really messy, I've just realised. Sorry. You know, <laughs> if you're going to start giving me grief about the state of the rooms I'm doing this in, I are doing it, do you know what I mean? Because I'm not a tidy person, particularly I'm a messy person. But anyway, um, so yeah, I did, I did just feel a little bit like I'd left Tony out yesterday and that would be doing him a massive disservice because he's incredibly important to us, and he's incredibly important to me as well. Um, with Tony being older than Tim, Tony Tony always kind of felt like a father figure, especially being on tour with us and having to put up with our childish behaviour. I mean, I'll get to all these stories. I'm not going to start talking about that now, but I mean, Tim, come on, Tim, you know as much as I do, you were as big a kid as us, and you probably still are. And, you know, there was often times where I thought, poor Tony, he's got to deal with, he's got to deal with five boys here, you know, us four. And <laughs> even though Tim were 11, 12 years old and us or whatever. But so I, I suppose what I'm trying to do is convey how much of a family that this felt like. You know, I think it's difficult for people who've never had anything to do with the industry. And maybe it's easy to assume people know these sorts of things. But I mean, God, did you think we did any of this ourselves? Any of it, other than making the music, other than actually creating the music? Do you think we did any of this ourselves? We didn't. You know what I mean? Like, you don't, you don't ring up promoters and book gigs. You know, you don't speak to, you don't speak to anyone. That is the beauty of a proper team, a proper management team, three managers, all with different skills. You know, uh, Rob Patrick's been the sort of, you know, the head guru. Tim being the vibe man, the, you know, the, the cheerleader and the man with the words who will make you feel, make you know you can do it. That's what Tim did. Tim would come up, he'd listen and then he'd talk to, to us and those talks were massive, especially for me. I'm sure they were for everyone else as well, but they were massive for me um, because it was hearing what we needed to hear at the right times. You know what I mean? Again, not letting us get carried away with ourselves but telling us all the right things and leaving us long enough to let it stew, but not telling us so much that we believed it or, or got carried away with it. Do you know what I mean? He was always take, he was always giving, but then taking was Tim in a good way. He was always like, that's amazing, but, but you're not there yet. Do you know what I mean? You are not there yet, but that's amazing, but you're not there yet. So it's not that amazing. Do you know what I mean? It was kind of like that kind of like a push pull and it, it it worked with Tony's dynamic as well Tony Tony was much more quiet um 
uh, as I say, <laughs> probably because we were all too busy insulting each other within jokes and stuff like that, and Tony was probably just sat in the corner shaking his head. But these are these are brilliant memories for me. Do you know what I mean? It's like a fa- it's, it is like a family. And again, people like Joe Feldman and Tina Partridge and Cy White and Steve Phillips and other people in that office. There were loads of them, all, all had different press offices. Do you know what I mean? Every one of them was like part of the family. And that's why walking into that office was just brilliant. Because everyone was there. They're all so nice. Everyone was welcoming. And it was, you know, the, the hub of the start of the most exciting time in, well, certainly my life anyway. Um, certainly the most exciting time in my life uh, with those people. And I suppose it's been difficult really over the last 10 years. Oh, we won't get into that now. So yeah, I might leave this one a little bit shorter because I kind of feel it was something that I should have spoke about yesterday because um, the Tony Wilson stuff and all and all that did happen before Long Road, I'm pretty sure. I don't think we played Long Road for Tony Wilson at Joseph's Well. I'm pretty sure we didn't. So yeah, um, I might even call this 2.5 rather than 3 just to, just to, so you know it's... It's kind of tagged on with the other bit. But yeah, I'll leave that there now. I don't want to go too long on this one. I just, I really wanted Tony to know that I haven't forgotten him. Because I hadn't, honestly. But yeah, thank you for watching. I don't want to run away with myself here, so I'll leave it there. Thank you.